Pastor David Platt, in his visit to a church in Asia, describes his experience like this. He was met by an Asian believer who told him to put on dark pants and a hood over his head. He told him to look straight down at the ground and watch the feet of the person in front of him. He said, eventually you'll come out down a long path that winds around into a small building. And he describes, finally, when he entered that building, there were about 60 believers there that were crammed into this room from precious little girls to 70-year-old men. They were sitting on the floor or a small stool, um, huddled up shoulder to shoulder with Bibles in their laps. There was one light bulb that was dangling from the roof. It was their only source of illumination. There was no band, there was no guitar, no entertainment, uh, no cushioned chairs, no heater or air conditioner, simply the people of God and the Word of God. And he says, strangely, it was enough. So whether you're in Asia, the U.S., or elsewhere, God is in the business of constantly shifting uh, our perspective um, in what we call wisdom to match his. And as we continue our devotional series entitled Chaos in Corinth, as we're looking at 1 Corinthians, today we're going to dive into chapter 2. And this chapter is packed with precious nuggets. And so today, notice how the fragile state that Paul is in in these first few verses. I'm going to read chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling. So in the first two chapters of 1 Corinthians, there's this huge theme of wisdom. Right? Paul is constantly contrasting two forms, a human wisdom and a wisdom that is generated by the Spirit. One form has an appearance of wisdom, while the other form generates power in our lives. In verse 3, Paul says, When I came to you, I was in weakness, great fear, and trembling. And the book of Acts, chapter 18, talks about this experience. This came on the heels of his visit to Athens, where there were many considered who were wise and learned people who mocked Paul. So he didn't come to Corinth um, with an overwhelming amount of confidence. Now, while in our human wisdom we may feel like um, these aren't really the best terms, Paul, that you should show up and minister to a church, on the other hand, perhaps the wisdom generated by the Spirit says something else. When we find ourselves in life succeeding on the inside of some uh, social circle, it becomes much easier to rely upon our own wisdom. Uh, life is a process by which God is constantly shifting the source of our wisdom um, from self to that which is generated by the Spirit. Now, when we, like Paul, grasp the frailty of our own wisdom, we too um, can join him by saying, For I resolved to know nothing when I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And so I want to uh, leave you with this question. Is the source of your wisdom that which is human in nature? or that which is generated by the Spirit. We are in for such a treat as we dive into the rest of chapter 2 this week.